I mean, I always, when I was, you know, I started off as an actor. I really, I thought, oh, I wonder if I'll ever make it to Broadway. Well, I made it uh, through a fairly circuitous route, but I made it. Stephen Colbert has indeed made it to Broadway, to the restored Ed Sullivan Theater, where he's succeeding David Letterman as host of The Late Show. Look at that giant chandelier. It's beautiful. Yeah. When they were cleaning it, they found uh, tools, parking tickets from the 1950s, a lot of cigars. Don't worry, all these ladders and scaffolding will be cleared out by the time he welcomes his first guests on Tuesday night. Will you greet the guests before they come on stage tonight? Because <laughs> yeah. some hosts don't. No, some hosts don't. I, I, I got in the habit of doing it at the old show because I wanted to say, hey, the guy you're about to meet is a complete idiot. Right. And you know, he's a well-intentioned, poorly informed, high-status idiot. And he's, the poorly he's informed, like high-status idiot bar. Stephen Just Colbert is referring to is the character Stephen Colbert. He played for 10 years on Comedy Central's The Colbert Report. Happy Valentine's Day, nation. I love you so much that I got you this show. <laughs> that character was a caricature of a blowhard conservative pundit. There is one firework that will never be too dangerous for Texas. This kind. <laughs> There's been plenty of speculation on who exactly will be hosting Tuesday night. Three months ago, you and I were talking at this party that CBS held. Yeah. And when I walked away after the conversation, a CBS executive came up to me and said, so what's he really like? <laughs> is that funny to you, this whole question of who really is Stephen Colbert? I mean, it's understandable. I, mean, I worked really hard to be that other guy for right. 10 years. But I hope people, I mean, thank God, you know who I am. <laughs> I hope they'll find out pretty quickly that the guy they saw for 10 years was my sense of humor the whole time. Yeah. It is, uh, I guess, flattering that people thought I was an actual pundit or a newsman eventually over the years. But it's really nice to not have to pretend it anymore. So what's the goal with the new show? The goal is to have fun with my friends and you know, that means sometimes talking about things that you care about. We're, all, we're going to want to be talking about what's going on in the world, but... But you uh, can be more transparently curious. Exactly. That's right. exactly a great word. Yeah. I want to be publicly curious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And if the initial lineup of guests is any indication, his curiosity ranges far and wide, from stars like George Clooney and Amy Schumer to the CEO of Uber to a sitting Supreme Court justice. How his show will distinguish itself from all the other late night shows remains to be seen. You have to be keeping one eye on what the other shows are doing, right? I mean, I watch the other shows, I mean, I like them, but we're here to compete with ourselves. I mean, right. we're, we're runners competing against our own time. So you're not looking That's at it. it as real estate, like, okay, lip sync battles is already taken. That's Jimmy Fallon's thing. So I'm gonna, you know what I mean? No, yeah. no, no. You have to do what you wanna do. Right. And those guys, I mean, Conan and Jimmy, uh, Jimmy one and Jimmy two, right? You know, and they're they both friends, and they both know which one is one and two to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to say it on air. I, I don't think you can do these shows uh, defensively, right? And so you have to go with your instincts about what what you like, and trust that there's somebody out there who feels the same way. The 51 year old married father of three has always had an audience. The youngest of 11 children, he was raised in Charleston, South Carolina. His mother, Lorna, was a homemaker. His father, James, was an immunologist. His parents were devout Catholics, as is Stephen today. Everyone in the family was funny. The household, as he puts it, a humorocracy. Did you watch Carson growing up? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, the family goes Jimmy, Eddie, Mary, Billy, Margot, Tammy, Jay, Lulu, Paul, Peter, Stephen. And my elder sisters, Mary and Margot, would watch Carson at night. And like in the late 60s and early 70s, and they would wake me up because they wanted me to watch it with them. Sometimes like as a toddler, as a three-year-old, they would put me between them. So my, some of my earliest memories are watching Carson on the old Naugahyde couch between Mary and Margot. When Colbert was 10 years old, his father and two of his brothers, Peter and Paul, died when their Eastern Airlines flight crashed while attempting to land in bad weather outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. At the time, his older siblings were already adults, 
So for the next eight years, it was just Stephen and his mother in the once bustling household. Has it gotten easier to talk about your father and the two brothers you lost? Yeah, as you get older, um, you know, you have more perspective over what made you who you are. And we lost my mother two years ago. And I, I, didn't, I didn't mind necessarily talking about dad and the boys, but I was always worried that something I would say would bring up a bad memory for her or somehow make her sad or, you know, or really more likely worry about me, you know, because mom would watch everything that I did, every show, uh, <laughs> every interview. And so nothing is easier without your mother here, but I worry less about um, that I might worry her or make her sad with my own memories. Do you think that your personality or the way you see the world would be different if you hadn't lost your father oh, and brothers? Absolutely, at that age? absolutely. How so? Oh, uh, it certainly gives you one step back from society uh, or what is considered normality because it's, in, it's, uh, it's a shock to the system to lose uh, your father and your brothers at that age. And school and friends and homework and that value system, which suddenly doesn't mean anything anymore. Right. None of it made sense anymore. I think that really helps if you're doing comedy or maybe even specifically doing satire, is that what seems normal no longer has status. Do you think you might be? It, it, I'd be a lawyer. That I was going to ask. <laughs> what? You, yeah. I would be a lawlier. You probably. think so? Or a yeah, doctor? There are a lot maybe of like lawyers your... in my family. Yeah. And we joke that the firm name should be Colbert, 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 and Colbert. <laughs> right. Instead, Colbert headed to Northwestern University to study theater, then on to Chicago's Second City for a very different curriculum. When I was at Second City, I used to try to go on stage and do embarrassing things. Like if I used to walk on stage in my underwear in like tidy whities at Second City to make myself be okay with how I looked in just, and not sexy, like oh high-waisted, you know, fruit of the loom. It's like unembarrassment boot camp, like just putting yourself <laughs> through this. Right, right, yeah. That's really smart. Yelling and uh, uh, singing too loudly in elevators. Watch the man that rode you, <laughs> switch from sail to steam. You sing Jimmy Buffett loud in an elevator that's crowded with other people and feel fine with it, that'll put hair on your chest. Jeez. His first job in network TV comedy was with the Dana Carvey Show alongside his old friend Steve Carell. We have a milk-fed veal with a uh, mint jelly. That, oh. <laughs> that, com that comes with asparagus tips and an olive caper sauce. <laughs> At Comedy Central, he starred in Strangers with Candy. Say, Jerry, I need somebody like you. You really seem to connect with the other students. Stephen Colbert is standing by live with a special report. And uh, joined the cast Stephen, where, of where The Daily you? Show. John, it's 11.10 my time, 10 after 11 your time. <laughs> this is where Aaron Brown attacked Geraldo. What has the reaction? John, John, I'm to this sorry. Yes, that's me, a fellow correspondent. Stephen Colbert is nowhere near Aaron Brown's news desk. Colbert's blowhard pundit character was born on The Daily Show and would soon grow beyond the borders of his own series, going on so real news shows to sound the alarm on the dangers of super PAC money. Super PACs are outspending the candidates two to one in South Carolina right now. That just means, according to Citizens United, there's just more speech than there was before even running for president, and unironically throwing his support behind Donors Choose, a nonprofit that bankrolls underfunded public school programs. Go to donorschoose.org, pick a school in South Carolina, and give all you can. What Stephen Colbert cares about will be even clearer on the new show. Ah, uh, yes, the new show. He'll be doing 200 of them each year. You don't get nervous at all, do you? Of course I do. Of course really? I do. Really? Yeah. Not it, about it, performance. It, really? No, no, yeah, sure. I, if I don't get a little bit nervous, then I'm not trying, you know? That I'm, that I'm, then I probably aren't, I should be sweating a little bit by the time it's over. Okay. And beforehand, I should have butterflies a little bit before I go out. Every night. 
how soon, once it starts, are you totally in it? And do you lose seconds. consciousness seconds. of seconds? Right. Yeah, seconds. It's the first joke. How about that? First joke. Right. Yeah. First laugh. First laugh. Because that's the drug, right there. Then, um, then, then I could do it all night.